If you could define the script in one word, it would be, be a good boy. All right? Be a good boy. So that's where we're going to start. I'm going to outline the middle class script for you, and I'm going to break it, break, break, it, break it down for you based on the various stages that you've been through in your life, and eventually to the end of the script. Okay? So the script starts with, be a good boy. All right? This means that you are... You've learned very early on to put on a performance. And I want to use an example of like you're at a family party and you're playing with your cousins or your friends and grandma's over there and your mom says, go give grandma a kiss and a hug. And you know, you're going to have to talk to grandma for 10 minutes or something like that. And you don't want to because you're a little kid and you don't know any better and you just want to go play with your friends. And you say, I don't want to, I don't want to kiss grandma. I don't want to go. Let me go play. And mom says, you go over there and you kiss grandma and, and you talk to her and you be a good boy. I don't want to. And then she shames you again. You know, you're going to get punished. Don't be a bad boy. Go kiss grandma. And grandma sees what's going on. Okay. She knows that you don't want to go over there, but you go over there and then grandma's very nice to you. And she's, and, and grandma's happy, even though grandma knew you put on a performance and you go back to mom and mom is happy, even though, you know, she knew that you put on a performance. So you learn very early on, even as young as three or four, that you are expected to not do what you want, but put on a performance and in return you get praise. And if you don't put on that performance and you're a bad boy and you get shamed. Okay. Now I'm not trying to say that like we shouldn't teach our kids to, you know, be involved in family. I'm just trying to look at this objectively. Okay. There's, there's not a uh, value judgment in that statement. I just want to give you like the objective perspective of that's what it is. Okay. It starts with be a good boy. It starts with performing. All right. And it starts at home. So then we move on to school. Okay. And we move on to the classroom and that be a good boy is extended into school. Sit still, listen, do your homework, listen to teachers. Don't talk back, work hard. Don't question anything. And once you do all that, you get to a good, you go to a good college. Okay. That's the game right? You're going to sit still. You're going to be a good boy. You're going to do your homework. You're not going to play with your friends for like eight hours a day. And then you're going to do more homework when you get home and you're going to do that for 20 years. And then in return, you get to go to a good college and you get to go into debt for the privilege of going to get called a good college. And before you even get to earn, before you even get into the workplace, you are now have student loans. And if it's like almost every college, you have the credit card companies setting up little booths and stuff to get you hooked on a credit card before you even get out of school. All right. And you've got situations where kids are going on spring break and they're paying for it with student loans and, and credit card. Okay. So they've already got you in two places and that's before you even get into the job market. All right. And your BA isn't worth shit. And you know that, and your parents know that, and your professors know that, but they are all telling you to do it because it is part of the script. Okay. It is part of the culture. It's part of the plan and they're on the plan and they don't differentiate from the plan and they teach you not to differentiate from the plan. Even though everyone knows that that fucking BA isn't worth shit in today's job market, but it's what you do if you want a good car corporate job. All right. It proves that you can perform and take orders, even though it is like, you know, it can cost some people a hundred, hundred and fifty, two hundred thousand dollars to make them barely more marketable than a high school graduate, but that's what they do. Okay. And some corporations look for that. They look for a BA because not because it's relevant to the, the corporate job. I mean, you could do a lot of these jobs starting at 14, 15, right? If you're willing to work your way up, but it shows that you can take orders. It shows that you've proven yourself to be part of the system. It shows that you, you've proven yourself to take orders and now you're going to be able to take orders in the corporate world. Okay. So that brings us to our next point, which is your job. And oh my God, when you sit down at your first job, if you're anything like I was, you get to see what all the fuss was about, what you've been working so hard for, for the last 20 years or 25 years, depending on how long you've been in school for is to literally sit there in an office where no one talks and just take orders. It is literally like when I sat down, I was like, this is fucking office space. This is literally office space. And that's like, that's a shocking revelation when you get to that point, right? I'm like 20 or 21. 
I've got a corporate job uh, in e-business at a, a, you know, big mutual fund company. And my family's so happy because it's, I've got a huge path and I'm in and young. And at the end of the day, you realize you're just sitting there to take orders, okay? You realize that the last 20 years of your schooling has taught you just to get a job, sit down, take orders from a boss. You don't have a teacher anymore now, you have a boss. Okay, and it's the same thing. It's the same exact shit. That's all you've been training for. 